And welcome back to The Crochet Crowd. I'm your host, Mikey. Today we're going to do the Accent Packed Square Afghan Design. This is actually meant for the Crochet Cruisers for Fall 2017 as we work on a project Linus together to be on board Carnival Magic, the Carnival Cruise Line for the Crochet Cruises. Within today's pattern, I'm gonna show you how to do the basic square that you see here and everything that you see on top has been embellished and we'll talk a little bit about that here. But let's talk about the details first. This is the spotlight square and all it is it's a basic circle once again and then the final two uh, rounds here in the single crochets are blue. So the entire thing is yellow until the final two rounds here are blue and then it transitions out. Where did I get this? This is an actual dishcloth from our yarnspirations.com. It's called the bat dishcloth and you can find that on there and all I just did is that I made it and then I sewed it down to the top of this. So let's just turn it over in the back. So here's what the back looks like and you can see that all rounds from one all the way to um, 11 are all gold and then the uh, 12 and 13 are blue. And so when you sew the motifs in make sure that uh, we have tips for that as well. Make sure you don't go through all the way because you're using black. Just go through the surface overlays or the surface um, um, our yarn strands in order to put it into position and just make sure that when you finish this you leave such a long tail that you can circle all the way around and just weave in your ends in the black and so then if your blanket ever turns over you have a nice clean edge like that and of course you could always put one on the back too. So this is a really kind of a neat idea. I was really quite inspired by this and uh, again you know it's a matter of going online and just pulling certain things from here and there and making your particular concept. So let's get started. Uh, the video tutorial is exactly the same. I'm following it from the start to finish. In the link in the more information of this video there is a pattern, a link in order to get this bat if you wish that. So let's get started on today's video. So here is the basic circle that we see here and then it has a ring two rounds of single crochet to finalize that and then we have a transition to then a square. So each one of the designs is the same design. It's just a matter of changing the color strategically in order to make it work. So the crochet cruisers have been challenged to make these kind of action packed squares with any kind of theming with overlays and embellishments. And due to copyright we can't specifically give you the instructions for some of these because it's too clo close to copyright. But you can find things online like the bat. That's just a dishcloth found on yarnspirations.com. The star here, this is the starting of a baby blanket that's in the star. This one here is from another afghan showing smaller stars. This here is just a granny square with just some strips of, of uh, crochet going back and forth. Again this is just a rectangular with another rectangular with a little bit of embellishment like this. And then the lightning bolt I've actually written the pattern for and you can find that on the crochet crowd as well and just say lightning and then you'll have that as well. And this is really kind of cool. So let's talk about the pattern itself and let's show you an example. So here is one of the squares. Again the star here is just a starting of a baby blanket just laid in top of the middle of the circle and then the circle is just growing out and then it stops and then we transition to a square. But I want to show you here is that whenever you put your embellishments on the top you should never see it on the back side. So this is what it's going to look like before you do that on here on the back. What I'm going to be doing today is that I'm going to be uh, coloring outside the lines of crochet. See how there's really no slip stitching that's available here. I can see it here because it's abnormal but if you slip stitch conventionally you end up with a really big gap. Today I'm going to solve that problem for you. I think it goes outside the rules of crochet so I can't really say that it's official. I would just do it if it were me to close that off. So today what we're going to do is that we're going to get you started and we have a crochet diagram thanks to Daniel and then let me show you that next. So there's an official pattern right here. You can download it here on the website. Just look at the more information of this today's tutorial and it will have a direct link and you can download this easily. So it's two pages of that. It is the circle centered transitioning to the actual square just like this. And then what we're going to be doing then is that we have a diagram provided of just the circle itself showing you how it's growing out and we're going to follow it along. And then is another diagram of taking it from the grayed out area which is the circle that exists and then showing you how to transition it here. And then you can see examples of here. So it's actually kind of neat how we, how we transition. So it doesn't matter which circle whether it's the one we're working on today or the one that's semicircle or the one uh, the, the one that's tapestry crochet. It's it's all going to be the same as far as transitioning then out to the edge just like this. So without further ado let's just go back to the start of this diagram and let's grab our size I 5.5 millimeter crochet hook and I'm recommending Karen 1 pound yarn for today's yarn. This video has sound alerts added. When you hear this sound 
it will be your signal that the segment is finishing up. Press stop and crochet the instructions and then press play again to continue along in your project. So on the crochet cruises I like to teach how to read diagrams. It's one of my go-to things on the ship and some of you are like oh my god no but this is actually really kind of a cool idea and once you understand this you can leave those words aside and just follow along. So we're gonna start off in the middle and we're gonna chain four and then we're gonna attach it with a slip stitch and then chain up three and then go into the center ring like so. So you're going to notice that there in this whole thing is that there's a consistency of growth as we get bigger and bigger and bigger each one of these are double crochet. We have a stitch key then on the top. So as it gets bigger and bigger you'll notice that every time you go to start a new section there will be two into the one and then it will be one one and then two and then it, you go in the next one there's two in the first one and then one 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 and then two. See the next one? Two in the first one and then one 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 two. So it's actually really quite easy to follow. I made it as simply as I could and the only one that's not as simple as it could be is number 13 and that's not a big deal but we need to bring it back in balance right at the very end of this. So the last two rounds of the circle itself are just single crochets and those are usually the rings that you saw in the actual pattern. Those two there make a nice thick ring that goes all the way around. So let's grab our yarn now and let's begin row number one or round number one. So let's begin and create a slip knot. And we're gonna insert that into the, onto the hook just like this. And we want to chain a total of four. So one, two, three, and four. And I want you to insert the hook into the beginning chain, yarn over and pull through and then you have the center ring nice and tight right in the center. Let's begin round number one. So in round number one we're gonna start off with chaining a three which counts as a double crochet and we want to double crochet 11 times into the center of the ring. This straggler just wrap it around the ring like it's part of the ring and so it'll stick underneath so you'll lose it underneath so you don't need to weave that in later. So let's count these out. So this is a, a total of one and two. We wanna get to 11 and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we got nine, ten, and eleven. So you actually have 12 and the reason for it is that the first one here, the chain three counts as one. So let's count those out to make sure we got it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, 11, and 12. And I want you to slip stitch to the top of the first chain three to conclude that round. So this is round number one. Let's move along to round number two. So as we move up to round number two, we're gonna chain up three, which counts as a double crochet and then we're going to put in a double crochet into the same one and then we're gonna put two into each one of these as we go all the way around. I'm going to cheat the system right in this very last one to show you how to bring this together so you don't have an obvious slip stitch. This is breaking the rules of crochet so exercise caution but this is what I would do because that's what I did to close it off. Let's move on to round number two. So let's begin round number two. We're gonna chain up three which counts as a double crochet and I want you in the same space that you just did the join, do it again, a double, uh, do a double crochet there. So there's two existing out of that one. So moving to the next one, I want you to put two double crochets in each one all the way around. So I'm gonna leave that for you and meet me back at the end of this round because I'm gonna show you how to cheat the system. So each double crochet that you're going into is gonna get two double crochets this time around. This is round number two and I'll see you at the end of this round. So as I come up in round number two, I got one stitch left which is right here. But do you see how this one's leaning over? This is what creates that slip stitch gapping that you see. It's this here is part of this so it already exists but it creates a gap. And let me just show you and prove that to you. So the very last one I'm gonna put in my two double crochets just like this and then I would join it to the top of the chain three. That's technically how it's done. But because you just did that it looks like it's abnormal and therefore it'll create a gap in your space instead of being consistent. So what I would do on the last stitch each time you're doing these rounds, okay, this is what I would do. Again I'm breaking the rules of crochet so don't quote me on this. This is your, your hack opportunity. So I want you to go into the last one and do the first double crochet, okay. Technically I would 
double crochet in that one again and then attach. But what I want you to do is that I want you to, to do two together using this final stitch and this section right here that's part of this. It'll join it together. So wrap the hook going into the same stitch that you were just in. Pull through, pull through two and then go into this one here which is technically not a stitch. Wrap it first going in, pull through, pull through two and hold it. So what you're doing is that you're putting this gapping space and the last stitch together to equal one stitch which is, keeps your balance and then pull through all three and then join to the top of the first chain three. And now see nice and closed. So it's you didn't add any extra stitches and in fact you just used it here just to cover in this gap space. So let's move along to row number three. So let's move up to row number three. We're going to chain up three and then we're gonna put a double crochet into the first one to, which is the same one and then the next double crochet sitting by itself and then the next one will have two into it. Then the next one's by itself and the next one will have two. So I'm gonna start you off in this round. We're gonna get you started and then I'll meet you at the end of this round just to recap on how to finish this round to close in that gap so that you can cheat the system just like that. So let's move along to round number three. So let's move along to round number three. We're gonna chain three which counts as a double crochet and then into the same one that you did the attaching you're going to put in a, another double crochet. So there's your two and in this round the next one then is by itself and then the repeat pattern going all the way around for this one is the next one has two. So one and two and then the next one's by itself one double crochet. So you're gonna repeat that same pattern going all the way around. So it's two, one, two, one and then you'll meet me at the end of this round. I'll recap on how to cheat the system to hide in that slip stitching that you would normally have and I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm back then to the last stitch that's available and then this is the one that it goes over to here. So if you're doing this correctly after you're going all the way around see how you got two here and you got one left. Well the next time you come around you'll have two there and then you'll have two left. So because you're starting off with the double right in the middle like the two right in the start for example then the next one's one. When you go to finish these off you're finishing after that point. So there's two here and there's one left. So what we want to do to fill in that space is that we're gonna put these two together. So just going into the last one pull through, pull through two and hold and then go into that last space right here which is technically not a stitch. We're just filling it in. Pull through two and hold and then pull through all three loops and then join it. Okay so when the last time we did it we were doing it so that the two into the same one but because we're now uh, getting it bigger you're gonna see that it's gonna be done that way. So let's move along to round number four. So chain up three. So one, two, three, two into the very first one that you did the attaching to and then the next two are are one each. So one double crochet in each. Okay so the repeat pattern for number four is two into the next one. So one and two and then one into each uh, one into the next two. Okay so please do that all the way around for round number four. I'm going to uh, insist that you're now gonna finish up uh, just like hiding your uh, your slip stitching just like I showed you. I, I'll show you one more time and then I'm gonna then leave that part of the tutorial for you then for the rest without having to reshow you each and every time. So two into the next one and then one into the, each of the next two. Please do that for round number four. So I'm finishing up round number four. So the next one has two in it just keeping the counts and then you'll end up with two left which is the right thing to do. So there you're just gonna do one double crochet in the next just like that and now there's only one here but you wanna put it together with the space. So just going in, pull through, pull through two and hold it and then go into that illegitimate space, pull through two and hold it and then pull through all three and then join it and that was round number four. So I'm not gonna show you that anymore. I'm gonna keep on going. So let's uh, move on to round number five. So one, two, three counts as a double crochet and you're going to double crochet into the same one. Okay and then now the next three are going to be one double crochet each. So one, two and three. So the repeat pattern for number five is that there's two into the next one. So one and two and then the next three are one double crochet each. Please repeat that pattern all the way around for round number five. Do the same trick at the very end. I'm not gonna show that to you and then we'll keep on moving. So this is round number five. So I'm coming up to the end of row number five and there's just three in a row. 
after we did that two into the same one and I'm just gonna do my little trick at the end. The last one I'm going to just make it and link it directly to that space that's right in front of it and we'll bring that to conclusion. So that's round number five. Let's move along to round number six. Let's move along to round number six now. We're going to chain up a total of three counts as a double crochet and put a double crochet right into the same one and now in row number, round number six there's gonna be four in a row of double crochets. So let's count those out. So one, two, and three, and four. And then the next one is going to have two. So if you're ever unsure, see how the two are into the same one right here? The first one is always the one that has the two in it. Just so you know when you're doing any of this double crochet into the circle. The only exception is the very final round as we go all the way around uh, in round 13. So again to recap then round six is four in a row. So one, two, three, and four. And then the next one is gonna have two and you can see the, see how it's the same ones under there. So the first one has two. Please do that same thing going all the way around for round number six. So I'm now at the end of round number six. I'm putting my finals together. There's four in a row and again doing my little trick then with the last one by putting it together with that space. And that concludes off round number six just really quite easily. So let's uh, begin round number seven. Round number seven let's begin chain up three and then just double crochet into the same one. Remember if you're changing colors at any time I will be showing changing colors on round number 10. So if you wanna fast forward if you wanna learn how to do that uh, sooner just fast forward to round number 10. So in round number seven we're going to do the next five in a row. So we did uh, double crochet into the first one and the chain three counts as two. So it's gonna be five in a row this time. So this is number two, three, four, and five and then the next one has two and again if you look where the two are in there it's the first one there that has the two. It's always a nice to have a visual confirmation. So again it's gonna be five in a row and then two. Five in a row and two. Please do that around for number seven. So now coming up to the end of round number seven remember that there's still five in a row. So one, two, three, four and then do my little trick. This is the fifth one but I'll add the gap in there just to bring it together. Put it together and then just uh, attach to the top of the chain three. So that's round number seven. Let's move on to round number eight. Chain up three counts as a double crochet. Then double crochet into the same one. So there's your two into the same one and now for round number eight the next six are by themselves. So let's do that. It's a one, two, three, four, five, and six. Just like that and then the next one has two in it and if you look at see where it's down and below it's the first one of that two that has the two again this time. So six in a row and then two, six in a row and then two. Please do that all the way around. So I'm just finishing up round number eight and I'm just uh, doing my final stitches here and the last one I'm gonna do my magic and put that together with the space close that off and make it look real good. Okay so let's move on to round number nine. So we just got one more round to do and then I'm gonna change the color to red to match the sample that I showed in the very beginning of today's tutorial. So this one is chain three again. It counts as a double crochet, double crochet into the same one and now the next seven in a row will be one double crochet each. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven and then there will be two in the next one and again see where this these two are together. So you see that? See the first one is the one with the two. I just wanna give you that as a reference point. Okay so here for round number nine it's seven in a row then two, seven and then two. Continue that all the way around. So I'm finishing up round number nine and I'm just coming right to the end keeping my counts. I'm all good and again that last one I'm just gonna put together but I'm going to change my color now and move along to do the next color that is available. 
So this is looks really quite amazing. So to finish off my color, so those that are, want to do that, you can change colors at any time, but you just have to just cut your yarn and then just pull through and then just weave it through about two inches of back and forth underneath the stitches here and then when you come back in the next round you're gonna go right up over top of that and then you'll trap that permanently in position or you could use a darning needle if you wish but uh, this is the way that I would do it just as a peace of mind. So let's begin round number 10. So I'm gonna use red. So we have a total of four more rows to go. So we have a two double crochet rows and then two single crochet rows. So right where we finished off we want to rejoin our yarn back in and start again. So this is where I joined it. So I wanna start there and I wanna just pull it through with a slip stitch and now chain three. So one, two, three and you guess right it counts as a double crochet and lay this straggler down. So go into the same stitch but lay this go down and then you'll trap that underneath the stitches and then you won't have to worry about that either. So you get two into the first one then and then how many in a row for number 10? It's gonna be eight. So there's eight double crochets in a row. So you kind of know the rhythm. So there's gonna be eight and then two and then eight and then two. So keep on doing that all the way around for round number 10 and then we're gonna fasten this color off, bring on white and then bring back the red at a later time. So please do that all the way around for round number 10. So as you come around in number 10 you're gonna notice that you have the woven in end that you had and you wanna make sure that you get underneath that so that you can trap it under position. So I just did my two there in a row. So just when I insert in make sure that it stays above so that I can get in there. So just when I go see, do you see it right there? It's that line. So when I sink in I wanna make sure I get underneath that so that it will get stuck into position as you go. So you're just gonna go all the way to the end just following it around and then I'll do my little trick at the end in order to keep it looking consistent without any slip stitching obvious stitch work here. So then I'm just gonna go right into the beginning bring those together and then go into the top. So I'm gonna fasten off this yarn here just like I did before and I'm gonna bring on my weight next. So please join me in just a second. So let's move on to round number 11. I'm gonna bring in my white now for my stripe and just gonna create a slip knot, put it onto the hook and right where I have see the first two coming in, I'm gonna go in the top of that first one, attach it with a slip stitch like I had before and then chain three. So one, two, three, I know the white's hard to see on the white background and then just double crochet into that same one as always. And so then this one here is nine in a row with just double crochets. So last time it was eight, so the next nine. So one, two, and three and go all the way to nine and then two, nine and then two. Please do that all the way around for round number 11. So I'm coming up to the end of round number 11 and I'm just continuing to have everything in balance and I'm coming into my last stitch and doing my magic trick. I'll just bring in the first in just to cover that seam line and then attach to the chain three. So we're gonna fasten off this yarn and we're gonna bring back the red for two more rounds of single crochets this time and we'll be right back. So just fasten this off and let's get our red ready to go again. So let's begin round number 12. We're gonna bring back our red and we're going to attach. This time it's gonna be a single crochet round and um, so we have the two that we had. So here's the line coming up. So it's the first one we're going to attach with the slip stitch. Chain one only this time because it's a single crochet and then just going into the same one in single crochet and then single crochet once more into that first one. Okay, so what we're going to do then, we're gonna work our way all the way uh, around. So this time what we need to do is that we need to put 10 single crochets in a row. So let's count these out. So one, two, and three. See how I'm going up over top of the line too? This is, um, so one, two, three, and four, and five, and six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And now the next one, see how they got the two into the same one for a reference point? That one's gonna be two single crochets. So you're gonna do 10 in a row and then two, 10 in a row and two. Please do that all the way around for round number 12. So I'm coming to the end of round number 12 and I'm just doing things as normal. Here's my last one and I'm just going to just put two together. This is a single crochet, let me show you that. So you're gonna single crochet but you're gonna put two together. So just wrap and pull through go into the space and pull through and then you have three on your hook, pull through 
and then you just filled in that space and then just join it to the top of the first single crochet that you had started with. So we have one more round to do in the round here and we're gonna leave on this here. So we're gonna change gears a little bit. So we're gonna chain up one and what we're going to do then to begin this is that we're going to put in two single crochets to start and the count this time around is going to be eight and then two, eight and then two. So let's do the first eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight and then two. So please do that same thing going all the way around for round number 13. So I'm just coming up on the end of round number 13 and I'm just putting the last one in and I'm attaching it to the gapping space to finalize it to bring it to conclusion and attach to the first top of the single crochet then that's it. So now we're physically done the round and now we're going to transition now to a square. We're gonna talk about that next and I want you to think about where that slip stitching line is in the middle of it and we'll be right back. Now let me just uh, fasten this off and I'll see you in just a moment. So I'm back here and now I have my circle just like you see here. So I got two of these now at the perfect size. They're awesome. You'll see the slip stitching line is right here. It's barely hard to tell because of the way that I did it and you can see before I didn't do it as the same. I did it kind of conventionally therefore you can kind of see it and this is the why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it here. So what you wanna do is you wanna classify where you're gonna put your motif if you're gonna use one at all because you're gonna wanna put the, uh, the seam line under a certain line that is not so obvious. So maybe you don't want it coming off to the side or at the top. Just think about where this is because what you need to do is that we're gonna start off right in the corner first as we begin and you're gonna want to position where this line is right off the top is so that you can have total control of it. Just think about at this point you have four uh, sides to be able to work with and so if you wanted that down here then maybe then you'll start off and you'll start off a corner like here and then just build it out if you want to and then just keep it so it looks consistent. So if you're doing more than one of these for the particular blanket you maybe wanted to watch where this line is and make it the same each and every time. So let's, so let's begin and we're gonna transition now to a square. So let's create a slip knot to begin and I'm just following the seam line and this is where I want my first corner to be. Okay so we're gonna just insert our hook in and I'm going to attach it with a slip stitch and then I'm going to chain four and that counts as a treble. So one, two, three and four. So each one of the sides are identical to each other. It's important to keep count as you go all the way around. So what we want to do is that we want to treble into that same one. So we're creating one half of a corner first and we'll create the other half of this corner when we come back around the other side. So we have two trebles into the same one. So now what we want to do is that we want in the next four stitches to be a trebles. So we're gonna wrap the hook twice and go into the next four for one treble each. So let's do that. Notice that I'm bearing in the, the tail as I go to keep it underneath the stitches. So I'm putting four trebles in a row. Just like that. Okay, so this is the very corner of your, your piece. So now what we're going to do is that the next five will be one double crochet each. So let's just do that. So one, I'll count these out, two, three, four, and five. So there is five doubles in a row. So we're gonna, I'm gonna drop the straggler now. So the next five are gonna be half double crochets. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so let's recap. So you had, after you did the first one that was a corner, you had four trebles, you had five doubles, five half doubles, and now you're going to do 11 single crochets. So this is the middle section. So one and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So this is the very side of your, of your square. So this is the corner, this is the middle of the side and then the corner will be over here somewhere. 
So think about this as a mirror image. So what you have to do is that you have to reverse what you just did over here. So you're gonna do up to begin. We're gonna do five half double crochets, five doubles and then some trebles. So let's do the half doubles first. So we're gonna put five in a row. So one, two, three, four and five half doubles. Now we're gonna do five doubles. So let's do that. So one, two, three, four and five. Really easy, right? And now we're gonna do trebles. So we're gonna do four trebles in a row just like we did on the other side. So let's do that. So we got one, two, we have three and four. So there's your four trebles and now the next one is the next corner. So to do that to corner what we're gonna do is that we're going to um, put two trebles into the same one. And then we're going to chain two and then we're gonna do trebles into that one again. So it's just like we're starting the other side. So I'm just grabbing some more yarn here. So we're gonna put two more trebles into that same one to finalize the corner. Do you get that? So all you're just gonna do is that you're gonna repeat what you already know from this one over here. So let's just do one more uh, side just to make sure that you got it and we'll just take our time here on tutorial format. So we're going to put four trebles in a row. So let's count those. So one, two, three and four. Just like so. And now the next um, th uh, five will be one double each. So you got one, two, three, four and five. Now the next five will be half doubles. So let's count those. So one, two, three, four and five and now we're ready for the middle section because here, here's a corner and we're gonna be in the middle. So the middle one there's gonna be 11 single crochets. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 and 11 and now we're gonna start getting bigger again as we head to the next point of the corner and what we're going to start off with is five half doubles. So one, two, three, four and five and now we're gonna do five doubles. So one, two, three, four and five and now we're gonna get to the biggest one. So we're gonna do four trebles in a row. So one and we got two, we got three and we got four and then the next one is the corner once again. So the corners if you remember are two, treb are two trebles in a row. So one, I mean two trebles into the same one sorry and then chain two this is your very corner and two trebles once again inside. So if you wanna uh, just review, just uh, rewind this bit part of the tutorial and just work your way across and you are making this the circle transitioning into a square. So continue all the way around. I'll meet you on the other side of this and then we'll move on to the second round of the transition. So let's finish this off. You can do it two ways. You can either chain two and attach it to the top of the first chain four which is what I technically do but if you'd like to be right directly in the center what you can just do is that you could just finish it with a half double crochet. So you just wrap the hook and then just go into the top of the chain four and half double crochet that like that and then you end up it right in the middle. That's up to you. Jeannie would do it that way. I would do it this way or the other or the other way. So Jeannie does it this way. I'd do it the other way. So let's begin the second round. So we're going to chain up four which counts as a treble again and we're gonna treble once again into this chain two space. Just like that. 
So what we're going to do this time is that there's gonna be three trebles in a row. So wrap the hook. This is the last time you'll be doing trebles. I know that you love them a lot. So we're gonna do three trebles in a row. And then we're going to move on. So the next six are going to be double crochets. So just going into the next six. Let's count these out together. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then the next six are gonna be half doubles. So we have one, two, three, Oh, I think I skipped one. Let's try it again. It'll be three, four, five, and six, just like this. The next 13 now are going to be um, a single crochet. So let's do that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. Just like that. And now we're, the next six are gonna be half doubles. So let's do that. So I got um, a total of one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now let's uh, go up to a double. So we're gonna do six in a row. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And now you'll see that you only have three more trebles left and we only wanna put in three anyway. So we're just gonna do three trebles left. So do one into each with the treble. Those trebles come in handy. I know a lot of people don't like it because they have to rotate that extra time around the hook but then it's a much taller stitch, right? So it's, can't have one without the other. So once you get that done, we're now going to go into a corner. So the corners will always be the same of two trebles followed by chain two and two, tre two trebles once again. So you can reverse this video and start back up again um, as we go across. So then the next three are trebles, six doubles, six half doubles, 13 singles, and then six half doubles, six doubles, and then three trebles, and then the corner of uh, two trebles, chain two, two trebles. Please do that all the way around. I'll meet you at the end of this rotation. So as you come all the way back around, we're going to then, you got the three trebles in a row and you're gonna finish off and finish the corner with two trebles. And you've got two choices. You can either chain two, one and two, and join to the top of the chain four, or you can just uh, pull that back out and just half double crochet to the top of that one as well and that will put you directly in the center. So let's move along to the third round and this is the last time that you'll be doing it because you're almost to the shape of the square but you, you can still see that you're oval a little bit so we're gonna be able to get that uh, completely fixed in the next round. So let's move along and do that. So this is the next round. This is the final round that transitions it and it gets it as close as it will ever be to a square and it really will be a square. So you're going to chain three this time. This counts as a double crochet and you're going to double crochet into the same space just like that. So what you're gonna do is the next seven stitches are gonna each be a double crochet. So you're done with the trebles. So one and two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now the next eight are going to be half double crochets. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, just like that. Now the next uh, 17 are going to be single crochets. So we have one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen. So now the next eight are gonna be half double crochets. So let's do that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And now the next seven are going to be doubles. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven takes you to the last one before the corner. And so the corners will always be the same of two double crochets this time and then chain two and two double crochets. So this will take you then to restart once again. So let's just recap. You can rewind the video and follow me across again if you need to. So it'll be seven doubles, eight half doubles, 17 singles, eight half doubles, seven doubles, and then the corners will be two doubles, chain two, two doubles. Please do that all the way around and I'll see at the end of this round and we've just got one more round to go. So when you come all the way back around, you're gonna finish off the final corner and put in two double crochet. And then this is it for this transitioning and then we just have one more border around so you can chain two and then join to the top if you want to. And then we're just gonna fasten off and we just have one more round to do and this will be the final conclusion of this. And then you can sew on your motifs if you would like to in, in order to customize it for you. Um, the star as I mentioned at the, at the start of the tutorial is just from a, a baby blanket. I just did a star and then I stopped when I thought it was gonna fit into the middle of the circle. So it's actually kind of an easy idea and I'll put a suggestion in the more information video or in the more information link of today's tutorial on being able to do that. So you can see that it's now uh, technically into a square and now the last round will make it completely into a square. So it's just slightly bent up a little bit, not a big deal, but the next uh, round will completely finish it off. So let's do the final and I'm just bringing back the blue, kind of matches the, the middle. Up to you, your colors that you wish. We're gonna start off in one corner, doesn't matter which one, just go right into the chain two space, attach it with a slip stitch and then I want you to chain a total of three. So one, two, three and that counts as your double crochet and then double crochet once again. And now each stitch across is just gonna get one double crochet noticing that I'm bearing in the, the end as I go. And so when you hit the next corner you're gonna do the same thing of chain or sorry two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet and then continue on with just one double crochet in each. So please do that all the way around. This is your final round of the square and I will see you at the end of this revolution. So I'm now coming all the way back around and the last corner is gonna be two double crochet followed by a chain two and two double crochet. So because this is the very end of the square I'm going to show you with the darning needle how to finish this off. So just leave an extra long tail so that you can feed it through a darning needle and just feed it through. So just pull it snug and I want you to take this tail here with your darning needle and just put it on. You don't wanna give this to a child and the tails fall out. Any other place we could bury it but we can't bury it right at the end. So just drag it along the stitch work. Do not impede with the outside stitches. So just keep on the inside and when you pop it just make sure it's underneath the line. So you should not be able to see it when you look down. Okay and just pull it through and just go one. Okay, pull it snug but just make sure it's got the flexibility right off the bat and go back in the other direction for two and finally go in the, in the other direction for three. So I'm going in different sets of fibers when I go back and forth because if you go in the exact same path it'll never stay. So then you can just pull it and now you can just safely trim it down into your project and it will never fall out because you have uh, weaved it in all the way. So this is how to complete this. Let me just back away the camera and let's show you what we've got done today. So here's our square today. This is the right side that's facing up. You'll notice that it looks different on the back side and here's the other one that was the original. So you can see that you can just sew on motifs. We'll do a separate video on how to sew on motifs just for your convenience. But this is how it will look. It'll be completely flat and when you go to join it to a neighboring square 
they'll be perfectly in line with each other. So here's the seam line up here. It doesn't matter where it is. It it only matters until you put a seam, uh, like a motif down on here. Then it will have a direction. But right now it's a clean slate and you can do anything that you want or you could just leave it like this as well. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Your Inspirations. Thank you so much and we'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.